Malawi, Kenya, uh, Zambia, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember all the countries, um, the Gambia, Ghana, um, Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago, Dominican Republic, Mexico, to have these wonderful relationships um, with nursing and midwifery leaders and to be able to set up this program and students go and there they are under the leadership of nurses and midwives there. Um, they see um, incredible resilience. They see creative ways of knowing, of learning how to do care for people. Um, many sites they witness um, unacceptable amounts of death and we need to work through um, how, how they can put this into, um, just like I did in South Africa, of learning about how often women, I'd never seen women die in childbirth, even though I taught it until I was in South Africa and then how it changes your perspective on what is um, the lack of human rights in so many places. So it really is a wonderful experience for students to kind of get completely immersed in this and, uh, and put themselves big, big courage into learning a whole other experience and bringing back the resiliency and uh, in many creative ways of how healthcare can be given. Um, when Ebola broke out in 2014 in Sierra Leone and, and Guinea and Liberia, um, I was haunted by the picture, which I will show you in a moment, of um, a picture of Josephine Finda Selu, who's a midwife in Sierra Leone, and she was half a page of the front uh, front page of the New York Times, and she was a tear was running down her cheek when I caught the picture, and um, 14 of the 27 nurses and midwives on her staff had died of Ebola, um, and she always I always kept her. I always taught students about her. I didn't know anything that happened. Um, but then I became part of an oral history project um, in New York City and got a grant. And we went to do record the oral histories of nurses and midwives um, in working on Ebola. And um, I'm in Sierra Leone. This is the beauty of what I get to do and the resilience and why I'm so passionate about it. So um, we're recording interviews one after another of nurses and, and midwives, um, and they're telling the stories. Um, and Ebola, for those of you, is, is transmitted by skin contact and fluids and uh, has about a 50 to 90% fatality rate. So highly, highly um, explosive. And rituals for death in the, in the country involved being with the body, bathing the body, eating with the body, the whole community would travel. So, and then that people became infected. So it meant looking at all of that. But anyway, so I go to do these oral histories and I keep asking um, the nurse, Joan Shepard, uh, the head midwife at the school, uh, do you happen to know Josephine Finda Salo? Is she coming? Will I get to interview? So she said, yes, she's coming and you'll get to interview her. So the first day, nothing happened. She didn't show up I'm interviewing many people. The second day she comes in and she of course didn't know that I was a complete groupie. I run up to her and I'm like, I know so much about you and I'm just so glad and I did her story. And then, and we still email each other every week. It was having her story known to the world about what she went through and what the nurses that she supervised um, and that she was with as they died from Ebola, what they went through um, and that, that um, led me to when we COVID broke out, what can I do? What can I do with the school nurse? I could go in and be a midwife. Is that really going to be helpful? Is it not? We did organize our students, nursing students, because we couldn't go global. Um, those who wanted to could volunteer and they went in uh, to the hospitals and worked right from the beginning. Um, and um, one student came to me and she said, my first the shifts were midnight to eight in the morning. And she said, and these people haven't graduated yet. It's their senior year. Um, she said the first night I went um, and um, I got on the shift and the whole hospital was being changed into a COVID hospital. And the head nurse said, um, you're gonna come with me. We're gonna do a post-mortem. Woman in this hallway just died. 
we're going to go and take care of her and then you'll do the rest that night. <laughs> so this woman's, the student's eyes as she's telling this story are, are just gigantic. So she goes in and clearly this is an example of what nurses and midwives do. She follows the, the nurse and she's quite frightened, the student. And the nurse says, um, Mrs. Hernandez, I'm here to clean you up and I'm going to dress you in white and then you're going to get to go home. And she talks to her the entire time that she takes the ventilator and the IV out and that she bathes her and that she wraps her, my trout. And um, she says, now you're ready to go home. Thank you, thank you uh, for letting me be with you. So the student goes out and um, she did six more that night by herself, April, 2020. So we're looking now at students and miss in students, but also all the nurses and midwives in these hospitals, what are, how are we gonna absorb their, how can we help them with the trauma? What they're seeing, and they're seeing their colleagues die. Um, something that was not, did not happen, quote, in this country. So um, I got the Dean to agree and I organized what I called circles of care. And they are our councils, I kind of, stretched thing, but I read the three tenets in the beginning. I tried to make it not, I tried to get to the essence of what we do, which is what I've always learned, sitting with you, Jeff, sitting with other people I sit with, of get to the real essence of it. So we rang a bell and we would sit quietly. We talked about just breathing deeply. And this is all on Zoom with nurses and the students. So uh, and then sometimes I would give, um, I, I would give prompts because I found if we just sat in silence, no one then spoke because they kind of didn't know what they were supposed to do. Um, but, you know, would anyone want to share what they've seen this week? And one by one, people would get on and it was just like the floodgates had opened. You know, one nurse said, you know, I see them. I take them wherever I go. I mean, the people, all the people who had died. You know, they're with me. I see them constantly. 